We talk a lot about economics on this program, but we are not just economic beings. We are human ones with a wide range of wants and desires, including, of course, desires for sex. Educator and activist Jacqueline Friedman was part of a discussion on this show recently about the complex relationship between power, privilege, and pleasure. I asked her to stay around. She came out with a book a few years back, Unscrewed, Women, Sex, Power, and How to Stop Letting the System Screw Us All. I think it's about time for an update, Jacqueline. <laughs> How are we doing on the being unscrewed front? Not good. Not good. Not right. very well, no. <laughs> Me too. Time's up. None of that stuff's helped. I mean, it has absolutely been a wonderful momentum and and the book was coming out literally in the height of me too obviously i wrote it before then because that's how these things work uh and i think that the me too conversation has been great it's been long overdue uh but we're in a time of profound backlash and there's no pussyfooting around that <laughs> <laughs> In terms of your book, you talk about faux empowerment or faux empowerment. Faux empowerment, yes. What's that? Faux empowerment is the idea that women can decide our way free, right? That if we take a pole dancing class or buy the right lipstick or, you know, just decide we're badass, free, sexual women, that that's all that it really takes. Now, I'm all for that stuff if people want to do it because I'm for people doing things they enjoy. But... Faux empowerment is an individualistic solution to a structural problem. And so the, one of the examples I give in my book that really illustrates the phenomenon is the story of a woman who had a lot of body image issues. She didn't like how she looked. She was really suffering over it. And a friend of hers suggested, you should go do a boudoir shoot, right? You should get a sexy photos taken of yourself. You'll see how beautiful you are. You'll feel better. And she did it. And it worked, right? And she saw the picture and she was like, wow, I actually am pretty sexy. And she showed them to her boyfriend and she felt better. And the faux empowerment story usually stops there, right? Hooray, this one woman did this thing that happened to involve capitalism, uh, which faux empowerment usually does. It's usually selling us something. And she felt better. There's no need for structural change. But what happened after that is they broke up. He was very angry that he no longer had access to this woman anymore. And he released those photos without her consent all over the internet. And she was deluged with rape and death threats. And so as much as I'm all for people doing things that make them feel better on an individual level, we have to stop falling for the idea that that's actual power. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about how we shift power in just a second. But before we do, I heard a statistic from an educator recently, a high school teacher, who said this is the first, this current generation of graduating seniors from high school is the first generation that has basically found its information about sex in online porn. Yep. And that is having profound implications. And let's talk about that and the systems, like unpack the systems in that a little bit. One of the systems that we need to talk about is the lack of sex education that those young people are receiving. If yeah. they were receiving robust, comprehensive, pleasure-based sex education in schools, they would see that porn in a different context. They would yeah. understand what they were looking at very differently. They wouldn't be trying to get sex ed from porn, which is like trying to get driver's ed from the Fast and the Furious. Yeah, we're not right? talking about queer friendly, right. feminist friendly. Well, that's the other structural issue, which is the free stuff that you can find online is produced almost entirely by this one company that until recent years was literally called Manwin. And they have near monopoly control over the industry because nobody wants to regulate, nobody wants to come out and be like, we need a better, more robust porn industry and rights for workers because of all the stigma and taboo about producing porn and about admitting anybody consumes porn. Um, this company, which has a lot of terrible labor practices, has run roughshod over the industry. Um, and so in order to access the really great, I think, like more nutritious porn, right, queer-friendly, feminist, ethically made porn, um, you have to even know it exists to go looking, which is not what a 13-year-old is going to do when they're trying to learn about sex on the internet. What does it do to their mental health, to all of our mental health? The fact that our society seems to talk so much about sex, but actually so badly. So badly. And one of the things that happens when you consume that lowest common denominator, stereotype reproducing porn, and 
in the absence of actual robust conversations about sex and pleasure is you reproduce those exact stereotypes, right? Like, so when schools decline to admit in sex ed programs that sex can be pleasurable, the people who are most marginalized around sex are the people who are harmed, so girls and queer kids primarily, right? Because boys, cis boys grow up knowing that sex is supposed to be for them on some level. Girls and queer people. People of uh, color. People of color. Um, when they do not get explicitly told that they sh have the right to expect sex to be pleasurable for them on their own terms, then when they, they have sexual encounters that don't feel good on any level, you know, whether that's a minor, oh, I didn't like that, or actual violation, um, they are not knowing that they can expect any better. We're preparing them to be, to replicate all of that damage. You prepared a beautiful video for your book promotion. I just want to let people get a glimpse of it. Individual solutions don't heal our sex lives because the biggest problems we're facing aren't individual, they're systemic. We don't need a pill to make us want sex more. We need a world where straight men are not almost 50% more likely to have an orgasm with a partner than straight women are. We need universal access to quality sex education. We need a media ecosystem shimmering with portrayals of three-dimensional women who get to be sexual on their own terms. We need rape to be rare and swiftly punished. We need a new cultural definition of masculinity. We need a government that recognizes our autonomy over our own bodies. Boy, do we need all those things. Yeah, we sure do. <laughs> so where are we? How are we moving forward? What are you excited about? The thing that I'm really excited about in this conversation is the specific strain where we're talking about the visions and experiences that we've lost Right? So we're not just talking about, that's bad, abuse is bad, don't do it. But there's starting to be a conversation. So recently, I think the New York Times did that story about Ryan Adams, the indie singer. Uh, and I saw some people, some doing the expected like, oh, well, if creepy men are held to account for being creepy, we'll lose all the male geniuses. But I also saw enormous amount of discourse in response to that saying, Imagine all of the art that didn't get made because these women artists were suppressed by this abuse. And, I, and the thing that's exciting to me always in a movement is looking about what we're moving toward and not just what we're against. And so the idea of having a shimmering media ecosystem that is not held back by the Harvey Weinsteins and Ryan Adams and all, the list goes on yeah. and on and, and starting to have access to those visions that we've been robbed of, uh, I'm really excited about the potential over time for the way that could change our culture. And the individualism problem? I mean, are we moving from a kind of me too to a, a, a we too, a we idea? It depends on who we mean. <laughs> yes, good point. <laughs> but I do think... But the idea, I think we have brought a critique to bear of the individual solution to the misogyny problem. Yes as we see and get smarter that no one woman can lean in far enough, can you know resist strongly enough, that we do need structural change. Did that feed even the electoral result of the midterms? Oh, I think that absolutely fed the electoral result of the midterms, and I think it fe it's feeding the preparations that we're all undertaking for 2020 already. Um, I think that you see a lot of women stepping up, but you also see a lot of understanding that we do need to be a we to move forward. So I'm thinking about projects like Flippable and Sister District and all of those projects that are about us acting on each other's behalf, leveraging our power together. Um, and I do think that there's been an upsurge in that kind of thinking and, and also in the kind of community care projects I see happening on a small scale all around my communities and, and probably yours that um, one of the things that's become clear to me is the way we resist in this moment where our so-called leaders are trying to lead by fear and division is by loving and supporting and connecting with each other, right? The internet is also our friend in addition to our problem. The internet. A lot of the community that you're talking about is finding home on the internet. I think that's true. I think of the internet like gasoline. It's an accelerant, an accelerant for all human impulses. 
Uh, and so it accelerates the worst of humanity, but also the best of humanity. Uh, I think we need a lot of regulation over the monopolies that control the way we experience the internet. Um, but the internet itself is not a malign force. It's not what you do, it's the way that you do it. Exactly. Isn't there a song? Jacqueline Friedman, thank you so much. What a pleasure. Absolutely. And I hope that we get a, uh, a sequel to your book. Are you working on one? Uh, I'm working right now with Jessica Valenti on a sequel to Yes Means Yes, an anthology called Believe Me, How Trusting Women Will Change the World, and that's out this fall. Fantastic. Yeah. Jacqueline Friedman's book is available through our website. You can get more information at www.lauraflanders.org. Thanks.